In this recording we're going to have a look, uh, a quick look at Netcat piped from Windows XP to Windows XP or from Windows XP to Linux. I'm running Windows XP version 64-bit which is 5.2. Okay, I've got two VMware consoles as well running. Let's just look at IP config. Okay, the most important thing here is our IP address 192.168.100.120 and if I ping uh, 192.168.100.1 I have a, a ping going through and dot two I have a ping going through and dot three I don't 254 I have so what I've got is a network that looks very similar to your university lab network in D003 let's have a quick look now at um, Windows XP. Inside this window I have Windows XP version 32 running. If I type ver we can see we've got XP 5.1 build 2600. So it's a different version of Windows XP. Let's look at IP config. Okay we have uh, a private network down here that's irrelevant. This is the important one 192.168.103. So if I ping 192.168.100.120 we're pinging through and we can see our system I'm just going to make sure that my firewall doesn't actually block any ping traces from this side okay so we've now got a number of different systems let's just go to uh, Ubuntu Linux okay I have Control Z round. Okay, IF config. If we have a look here, we have our IP address 192.168.100.2. Okay, so let's see who we can ping 192.168.100.1.2.3.120. Uh, and 254. Okay, so we can clearly see that we've got a lot of uh, network traffic running. What I'm going to do, I'm going to go to my Windows XP host. Okay, so we're going to turn off these two or and go to here. What I'm going to do, I've got the Netcat binary here actually installed and running. I've told my firewall that it's okay and that I, that I can actually run Netcat. Okay, so netcat, we're going to make it a daemon or a listening, so it's going to act as a server. That's the minus L flag. Minus P, 10,001. That's the port number that we're going to use as in the lab script. Detach from the console and run the command, command prompt.exe. So this command prompt here cmd.exe is actually going to be sent through port 10001 to anybody who connects to this daemon hit enter nothing happens so for uh, a quick analogy a virus has hit your system and now you are listening waiting to be uh, controlled by someone else let's launch Windows XP okay so here I have another Windows XP system. I type DIR. I've got Netcat installed. I know that I can ping 192.168.100.120. That was the address of the machine that I was on previously. So let's run Netcat 192.168.100.120, and we need to talk to port um, 10,000 and one. Hit enter. Now what just appeared to happen is we've got a command prompt. We're running on Windows and we've now got a different version of Windows. Look here 5.2 okay different build number. If I do a DIR we see the same files. If I do a DIR here we see that I've got Netcat, Schmidt and so forth. If I go back one directory again Oh, it didn't like list space. Sorry, I'm used to typing Unix commands. 
Okay, this is my laptop's operating system. So if I go to the simulations folder, okay, there's a lot of directories here talking about um, electronics, flash files, uh, and simulation data for electronics. So you can clearly see that instead of being on this Windows XP32 machine, I'm on a different machine. Well, I'm going to break my connection to this network now. Okay, we can now see that we're back on our Windows XP32. You're probably thinking that's not very impressive. So, what I'll do, I'm minimizing that, and I'm going to bump up Linux. Okay, what I'm going to do here, I've got Wireshark ready to go. I'm going to start a capture on Ethernet Interface 0. This is the bridged interface. This is talking on 192.168.100. And I'm going to click Start. And I don't care about what I've already got captured. Now lots of traffic will come in from the Cisco switches, from routers, and from various other things. I've got a couple of Windows boxes on this network. So they're going to talk and we're going to see them. I'm now going to filter in here a display filter on TCP port number equivalent to 10,001. Hit enter. No frames of traffic are coming up. Let's go to my console prompt. IF config. We can see here that I have an address 192.168.102. I'm going to ping the address of this com compromised computer 192.168.100.120. I'm getting some duplicate frames there because it's going in multiple directions uh, because I've got different network setups to, to make this work. That doesn't matter. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run netcat. I'm going to talk to 192.168.100.120 on port 10001. We're now running on Linux and we can see a Windows command prompt. Okay which is quite impressive. Let's go back to here. Okay, let's do a DIR. We can see a lot of information. Let's go and find out what just happened. Let's go to Wireshark. Okay, I've expanded Wireshark here. We can see a lot of frames. We're only looking at TCP port 10001. Let's do a TCP follow stream. Excellent. We've now got a window that has shown us exactly what has come back, what has been returned from Linux to Windows, the listing, and all of the commands that I have typed to get a listing. Well, I think that this directory here is really interesting, simulations, so I'm going to change to that directory and then see what happens. I've now got that. Let's go back to Wireshark. Now this capture needs to be closed. Uh, we've still been capturing the data, so if we now just do follow stream again, we actually have some more information now. Okay, we've ch as you can see here, we've changed the directory simulation and we found out all of these individual directories and there's an iTunes. Um, installation file ready to go in on this Windows system. Now that doesn't work on Linux so you can clearly see we're working across the network using um, our Netcat service. Okay now if I just clear the filter that is in the presence of lots of other traffic inside Windows including spanning tree there's some DNS lookups going on here. There's some NetBIOS name query going on here. So there's a lot of traffic. That's partially what you can analyze. Hopefully you've just seen one of the very basic netcat pipes across a network. You've also had the uh, ability to see it working from Windows to Linux, Windows to Windows. This command here is the command that would be used if you had a virus or something like that. So you now have a remote system uh, that can be compromised and used for all sorts of attacks.